Hi, I'm Jenny Fish from One Big Happy Yarn Company. We want to be your local yarn shop no matter where you are. Welcome back to the Arcadia Poncho Knit Along. Last time we knit the collar. Now we're ready to start the body. In this episode, I'll show you how to work these amazing cables along with a simple increase that adds flair to this poncho. If you still need supplies, check out our website at onebighappy.com. Are you ready to get knitting? Let's go! So we finished the cowl portion of our poncho and we're ready to start right here. So you'll see this line. This is the beginning of the round. It's okay, you're switching from knitting one round to purling one round, that's okay. Now we're ready to start working the body of our poncho and it starts right here and right off the bat we're going to be working the chart. So I'm going to give you a few of my tips for working with charts. Number one, make a copy. So when you make a copy, if you are only able to make a black and white copy, this chart is color coded. So you may want to take highlighters or colored pencils, something to mark the different colors so that you can keep on track and use your copy instead of using the pattern out of the book. Um, having a copy, you can write your own notes on it, it's portable, I prefer doing that. So here's my chart and I printed mine in color. It's a lot easier for me that way, but like I said, you know, you can work with the black and white copy. This chart is worked from the right side to the left side on every round. Because you're knitting in the round, when you come back to your chart portion of the pattern, you will start again on the right side. And the key to the chart is right down below here. So the dots that you see, those are pearls, the empty squares are knits, and then this little section here and here, those are our cables. And on here, it gives us exactly what we're doing for each of the um, cables. And I'll show you how to work those here in just a second. So let's get to work on this chart and on this pattern. This is where we're starting, right here. And we're working this way. I'm gonna move this aside. And here's my little sample piece that I've been working on. This is mimicking what you'll be working on. You'll have a lot more fabric in yours. So we're gonna start out the pattern. Let me get exactly how we have it here. It says work one round in the chart over 30 stitches. So, my first stitch here is it's kind of a salvage stitch for me in my sample. So we're going to start right here and we will put in a stitch marker. You'll already have a stitch marker there because that's the beginning of your round. Now we're working the chart pattern. We look at the pattern and our first three stitches are the dots, which mean purl. So what we're going to do is purl those first three stitches. One, two, three. And then we knit two. One, two, purl two. So you'll continue along knitting and purling on this line as it shows you. I love the name Ar Arcadia for this poncho. Um, I used to live in Oklahoma and we have Lake Arcadia down there. And um, funny story about using a compass. This was before we had the compasses like already in our navigation system. I had a compass on my keychain and I knew to get home I just needed to go north. I knew I lived north of the city because I didn't, I, I'm horrible with directions. So I was following this compass that was on my keychain in the in, you know, in the ignition, and I ended up at Lake Arcadia. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, Lake Arcadia is south from where I'm trying to go. And little did I know that it, at the time, if you had a compass on your keychain and had it that close to the engine of your car, it would always read north. So I was going the wrong direction. 
every time I think of this poncho, I'm like, I hope I'm not going south. <laughs> okay, so I've almost finished my chart pattern here. I've got three more stitches that I need to purl. And then we are going to work on our increase. Okay, so now that I've finished the first 30 stitches on my chart, I'm going to go ahead and place my stitch marker. Now we need to make our increase. And in this book that we have here, in the last page, towards the last page, at the back of the book, in this book, is the abbreviation and terms guide. You can look on here and it will tell you how to make this stitch. And this is the make one left and it's worked as a regular make one. And that's where you pick up the horizontal strand in between the two stitches and that's this one right here. You pick it up from front to back and you put it on the left needle like that. Then you knit through the back loop. I'm going to show you a little trick that's easy to get to that back loop because sometimes it's hard to stick it in there like that. You take your right needle, scoop this up, and then bring your left needle forward. Now you're already in position through the back loop to knit that stitch. And then we'll go ahead and knit that. And we have made one. We have increased by one stitch. You'll go ahead and continue back in stockinette stitch all the way around to the front side of your work. And in the pattern, it'll tell you how many stitches you need to knit to get to the front side of your work. You'll work that pattern again that's in your chart. You're still on uh, row round one of the repeat. You do that twice, once for the front, once for the back of the poncho. Then you work your way around back to your um, stitch marker. So we just finished our make one left increase. You'll go ahead and work the number of stitches your pattern indicates until right before you're ready to start the chart again for the front side of your work. You need to do a make one right increase. Now I'm going to show you how to make that. We're going to take our right hand needle, pick up this bar right here from back to front. We're going to slide that on our needle and now we're going to knit through the front loop just like that and now we have made a make one right increase. Then you'll go ahead and continue the chart um, going back to row one because you're going to do this twice. You'll work your um, make one left increase again and follow the directions in your pattern. It'll walk you all the way through. In this row, increase row, you're going to make four increases. Now one of the things I noticed with this pattern is every round that's just knit in pearls on the chart is an increase round. The rounds that have cables are regular no increases. So what I found worked for me is I wrote on my chart, make one next to each one of those rounds so that when I was just knitting along and you know listening to my audio books, Following, following the chart, when I saw that, make one, oh yeah, this is an increase round. I need to go ahead and do that now. Just a little tip that worked for me. I'm sure you know you have your own little tips, but I hope that works for you. Try it out, see how it works. This is your copy. So now, go ahead and finish this round, and then I'll show you how to work the cables. Okay, now we are ready to start working the cables. Now, I noticed in this pattern that it's color coded and it doesn't really say like this is a left leaning cross or a right leaning cross. It just gives you the step by step directions on how to work these stitches. I will tell you, cables simply are just stitches rearranged and then knit like normal. So we're working them out of order but we're putting them into different orders so that they lean different ways. And by doing this, it causes these ridges that we have over here to give it this really nice, kind of elegant, um, swirly pattern. <laughs> I don't know what's the right word there. What is that word? Twisted cable pattern. <laughs> so we are on round two of our chart. The first 
three stitches are knit stitches and you can tell that because they're just empty boxes and our key tells us that the empty boxes mean knit. So I'm going to knit my first three stitches. One, two, and three. Okay, now we are on an orange section which each, the orange and the yellow sections are made up of three stitches. And on the orange section, the first two stitches, if you look below on your chart, the first two stitches are knit stitch and the third stitch is a purl stitch. So you have two stitches here and then a purl stitch over here. The directions say to slide two stitches onto the cable needle and hold to the front, then you knit the one stitch that's left on your needle, then you knit the two stitches from your cable needle. And if you see how my fingers are, you see these two stitches are crossed over the third stitch. Let me show you how that's worked on the actual stitches here. Now for cables, when you're holding stitches to the front or to the back, you have several different options. We have a cable needle like this that you can slide on. I prefer a double pointed needle. It's just my preference. It's what I always have in my knitting bag and um, I like how smooth they are. So we're going to slide the first two stitches onto our cable needle. There's one and two. And then we're going to hold those to the front. We're going to knit the third stitch right here. And then knit two from the cable needle. So we bring those back up. You can slide them back onto your main needle or you can just knit them straight off of the double pointed needle, just like that. And now you've made your first twist. When you're first starting, before you get some fabric built up underneath, it's really hard to read your knitting. It's hard to see those twists and see those um, stitches forming. Once you get further up into the pattern, you'll be able to see where they're twisting and turning and, and get a better idea. So when you're just beginning, follow the chart, have faith in the chart, have faith in your knitting, and just keep going. The next stitch um, pattern is the yellow. And for this one, we are slipping one needle onto our cable needle. And for me, that's a DPN, or a double pointed needle is what DPN stands for. Slipping one on here, and we are holding it to the back. We're knitting the next two stitches off of the needle. There's one and two. And then we're going to bring this stitch that's on our need double pointed needle to the front and knit it. So now what I've done is I have one purl stitch and two knit stitches. I knit these two and then I knit that one so I formed a cross like this. Next is we knit two stitches There's one and two, and then we're back to an orange. Okay, so when you're looking at your chart and you're looking at these symbols, you'll see this gap right here that's angled this way. So you know that when you've knit this section, your stitches are going to lean to the left. When you're working on the yellow, you'll see the open area going this way. Your stitches are gonna lean to the right once you've finished making them. So, okay, I've, I'm right here in my chart now. I'm going to work on another orange section, and the orange section, section is slip two stitches onto your cable needle and hold them to the front. And then we're going to knit one stitch from our active needle and then two stitches. from here, and now we've formed another cross. And like I said, once we get going, 
you'll have more work and you'll be able to see these stitches more defined. Just trust in the pattern. Okay, now we finished the orange section and we're back to knitting just two regular stitches. And now back to knitting the yellow section. So our stitches are gonna be leaning to the right. We slide one stitch. And if you also, something else here too, look. This stitch that I'm grabbing to hold to the back is a purl stitch underneath. This is where we purled before. These two are knit stitches. The two stitches that are gonna be on the top of our cable that we're gonna really be seeing are the knitted stitches. So when you see that, you kind of want to pay attention to what the stitches look like underneath. This purl stitch here, I'm going to slide that to the back. I'm going to knit these two stitches here. And then knit the stitch here. And I finished the yellow section. Okay, then we knit two more. Now we're going to do an orange and a yellow back to back. And this is a good time to show you how these look. We're doing the orange section. We have two knit stitches and one purl stitch. After that is the yellow section, which is one purl stitch and two knit stitches. And you can tell the purl stitches by the bumps right underneath. Those purl bumps are seated right below that active stitch. On the knit stitches, there's that V shape underneath there, that heart shape. If you look at these and pay attention to these, as you're more familiar with your chart and as you move along, because you'll be repeating this chart pattern, I think around 12 times, several times, depending on the size that you're making, you'll get more familiar. But if you can learn to read these stitches underneath, it'll definitely help you along the way. I am now doing the orange section. I'm slipping the first two stitches onto my double pointed needle and I'm holding that in front. I'm gonna knit this stitch here from my active needle. And then knit these two stitches here. You know, it's funny. When I'm knitting for the camera and holding it so you guys can see, I hold things completely different than when I'm just at home in my recliner knitting. So don't think that I knit, I hold my work like this all the time. I'm just trying to get it so you can see everything. Normally at home, I'm like wiggling around and have it wherever. Okay, so now I'm pulling one, holding it to the back, and knitting two from the active needle. And then knitting one from the back needle. There we go. Go ahead and finish this round and the next round of Knit and Pearls, and then I'll show you how to work the next set of cables. Okay, now we're ready to start round four of our chart. We have two different kinds of cables in this section. This is a two by two left leaning and a two by two right leaning. And in the pattern, they have it distinguished between a green and a blue. But if you look, you'll see that open space like I showed you before. The green is leaning to the right and the blue is leaning to the left. So let me show you how to make these. So we start out on round four of the chart the first four stitches are knit, and I've already done those. Now we're getting into the green twist, where we slip two on the cable needle, and for me, again, I'm using the, the double pointed needle, and we hold those to the back. We knit two stitches from our active needle, and then two stitches from the cable needle. And you can see those starting to twist right now. See how those two twist? So we've had the two stitches. The first two are held to the back. You knit the second two and then the first two. So it crosses like this, leaning to the right. That's your green. 
your blue is going to be the opposite. And let me show you how that's worked. Um, we've got 14 stitches in between here that I just need to knit um, normally. So let's get to that real quick. Okay, so I have knit across the center stitches. So now I'm ready to start the blue twist. What I'm gonna do is slip the first two stitches onto my cable needle, and we're gonna hold those to the front. Then we knit the next two stitches off of our active needle. Then knit the two that we held to the front. And we've made that twist right there. So this one, we have the four stitches. The first two we're holding to the front, we're knitting the second two, then we're knitting the first two. And that causes the twist to go this way, so it is a left cross right there. Now, here are some tips I have for you. I would highly suggest that any time that you're knitting in this 30 stitch section that your chart is, don't put your knitting down. Finish that whole section. You just don't want to put your knitting down while you're in the middle of a twist, in the middle of making a cable, because so many things can go wrong. The next tip I have for you is called a lifeline. Now, when you're working these cable patterns, this one is a 12 round repeat. You can put the lifeline in wherever you're comfortable. The first time I'm working a pattern, I usually like to do a few rounds and then put a lifeline in, do a few more rounds, check my work, make sure that it's all right, put in the lifeline again. Then once I'm comfortable with the repeat, then I'll do it every repeat. I'm gonna show you a trick using these needles. With these interchangeable needles, they have this little hole right here. This hole is where we put the pin in to tighten up to tighten up our needles or to twist and take them off. But using dental floss and this little hole right here, it makes it super easy to run a lifeline through your work. I've done this second, um, or I've done this with fourth round. I'm looking at my work. I see that all my twists are in the right spot. I wanna save myself. I want to put in this lifeline to know, hey, when I go to the next section or two, if I make an oopsie or I make some kind of mistake, I know that where I put that lifeline in from there on down is correct. Okay, let me show you how I put the dental floss in my needles. Be sure you're using the active needle. This is the one that you're gonna be knitting with. You can put it through this little hole right here. It just slides right in there. I'm using the just some inexpensive brand of dental floss. It's the tape kind. I don't have any wax or any special um, smells on it or anything, but that might be nice. Add a little extra minty freshness to your knitting. Okay, so I'm tying this on here. If your needles do not have that hole, you can thread a tapestry needle and then run that through the stitches on your cord here. Some people have used scotch tape and like scotch taped. You only need it for one round. Um, the that you're saving your stitches on. Okay, so I've got it just tied right here. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my knitting. Now, because this is a sample, I'm not actually knitting all the stitches all the way around. I'm floating, so you'll see these here, because I want to show you what it actually looks like on the front piece. So I'm just gonna float this for me. You will be knitting all the way around. Okay, so let's knit these stitches here. I'm currently on round five, so I'm gonna have an increase here. Let me work that real quick. And then slide that through. Just gonna work a few more stitches here and then I'll show you how this works. Okay, so I've just knit a few stitches here, but how this lifeline works is as I'm knitting around, you see how that floats in there? It rides right along that cord. And I've gone through my stitch markers. Now I learned this trick before too. I leave 
the dental floss going through my stitch marker. When I knit back around and I get back to my beginning stitch marker, I cut my dental floss and I attach the two ends together and I just leave it in my work. I let it stay there so it holds those stitches. When I knit around and I get to my stitch marker, I'm gonna find that my stitch marker is also dental floss is running through it. So I drop that and leave it there and put on a new stitch marker for my next round and that'll ride up with my knitting. And then if I have to rip back to my lifeline, I already have a stitch marker right in the place that it needs to be. So these are my tips for using a lifeline. Phew. <laughs> now that I've given you the breakdown on how to work the cables and increases for the Arcadia Poncho, you can give it a try. Go slow. Keep track of where you are in the pattern with posty notes or a pattern keeper and take it one twisted stitch section at a time. Once you have finished your first repeat, put in a lifeline to secure your work. Do what works for you. These tips are yours to modify. Remember, you can get a kit with the yarn and the pattern book at OneBigHappy.com. Join me next time as we go over modifications. It's okay to adjust to your taste. We'll talk about how to fix cable twists that have gone the wrong way, ripping back to a lifeline, and how to pick up and start again. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the bell to be notified every time we have a new video. Happy knitting!